Hi folks, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm here with my 2011 ML Class W164 chassis Mercedes Benz. And as we can see, we've got an issue here with the airmatic suspension. Now, if I just drop down low, I will just show you here that the front right air strut has fully collapsed. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you would have seen that I actually replaced this complete right front strut about nine months ago. So my initial thought was, oh my gosh, how can that strut have failed already? I mean, all that work to replace that front strut and it's only done nine months. The car's probably only done 10,000 kilometers. One would assume that the strut should last at least 100,000 kilometers. So rather than just jumping to a conclusion and replacing that strut straight away, what I actually did was I've actually been doing some experiments with the vehicle and just observing the vehicle over the last week. And I'm going to show you that here today because now I'm not actually convinced that the front right air strut has failed. So there's actually two goals to this video. One is to actually show you the process which I've gone through to diagnose the problem with this vehicle and then to actually show you what's wrong with the vehicle. So let's get into it now. So for the first experiment, we've left the car for three hours. Now you can see the front right's down. You can see you can fit about three fingers in here between the top of the wheel and the guard there. We'll go around to the front left. Just come around here. It's a little bit tight on access, but you can see here it can fit a full hand in here. Okay, so we'll go down to the rear of the vehicle. You can see the rear of the vehicle's up nice. So keep coming, come around here. And you can see the right rear is really nice. So basically, come up to the front again, you know, just looking at the vehicle, you would assume that just looking at this scenario, okay, so I've got a problem with my front right. But to continue the experiment, we're just gonna leave the vehicle now overnight, and we'll come back to you in the morning. So right now, I've deliberately left the vehicle sitting overnight. So the engine's been switched off probably for a good 12 or 13 hours. Now, we can see that the front right strut here is completely deflated you can see i can really only fit like one maybe two fingers at a push between the tire and the guard now let's come around to the front left by comparison now around here i'll get you in for a good shot you can see around this side it's actually a little bit higher now probably a little bit hard I'll just bring the camera in but you can see i can fit pretty much four slash five fingers between the front left and the guard now Looking at that, you might think there's still, okay, it's front right collapse, but let's go have a look at what's happening at the rear. Okay, let's have a look down here, folks. So at the rear of the car though, look at this. You can fit like one, and if I wasn't holding the camera here with my right hand, I could probably fit another whole hand. So it's really become really high at the rear. Let's have a look what's going around, around the other side here, we can see Round here also, so this is right rear, we've got probably one and a half hands. So situation right now with the vehicle is that the front right is tipped down and the rear is up with the rear left up higher. So the whole car is kind of tilted over sideways. So I come back down to the front right Got my keys here. Now let's see what happens. Car's been sitting overnight. You've just seen, done the tour of the vehicle. Let's see what happens when we unlock the vehicle. I'll just wait. Being patient. And we'll keep waiting. Look at this. The car on its own without even starting the engine, is actually self-leveling. You can see it's jacked up the front right. It's jacking it up more. This is just the front right, folks. I haven't started the engine, haven't even gotten in the vehicle. And look at this. I can now fit my whole hand easily in the front left. The car actually just locked itself. That's how long it took. I'll just unlock it again. Can fit the whole hand. Now, what I do is just open and close the front right door here, just so it doesn't relock itself. So we can fit the whole hand. And let's take another tour of the vehicle. 
as I said, this vehicle sat overnight. We've got back to normal ride height on the front left. Let's have a look what's going on down at the rear. So we've still got a good, probably one and a half hands there. And another good one and a half. But as you can see, the vehicle has now really completely leveled up without even starting the compressor. So as I've observed the vehicle over about the last week and a half, and I leave the vehicle and I come back to it at different lengths in time, what I noticed that slightly different scenarios were happening. Typically though, the front right air spring was coming down lower within the first three or four hours, as you've seen here today. But then when I left the vehicle for extended periods of time, such as overnight, the car would be slightly different when I came back. Sometimes I would find it that the front right was fully collapsed and the rear left was up, so the car was tilted over, as you've seen it here overnight. Other times when I'd come back though, it would be a bit like a hot rub. The front right and the front left would be both fully collapsed and both the rear left and the rear right would be fully up and the car would be tipped over on its nose. So as I was thinking about that, it really did lead me to believe that I didn't have a problem at all with this front right air spring or in fact the front left. And also it'd be highly unlikely that we've developed a problem with both at the same time. Given on my videos, I've actually replaced all of the air springs in this vehicle in the last couple of years with this one the most recent one, as I said in the beginning of the year. But what I've done here is I've just drawn a picture here of the Mercedes Airmatic system so I can explain to you a little bit more about what I think is going on. So what I've drawn here is a functional representation of our Mercedes Airmatic system. And what you can see on the right, we've got our air springs. So we've got our four air springs there, the front left, the front right, the rear left, the rear right. So there are air springs on the vehicle. Now, coming into the middle, what we can see is that our air springs are connected by a valve block to our compressor. And then the valve block also has an air reservoir. So the job of this valve block is actually to distribute the air between all of our air springs and the reservoir and to completely control and to level our vehicle. Now, in the scenario that I've got here, it's fairly clear in my mind that we've actually got a failure that's starting to occur with the valve block where when we leave the vehicle it's actually redistributing the air away from the front right air spring to probably the other three air springs but sometimes it redistributes completely from the front to the rear of the vehicle so i'm fairly confident when you look at this logical functional picture that the problem is here with my valve block so at this point in time, as I just said, I'm fairly convinced just by observing the vehicle and thinking about the logical representation of that complete airmatic system, that my problem is actually with the valve block. However, if you want to, and I'll show you in a moment, you can actually do some further leak testing of different components with some soapy water. So we'll do that in a moment. But also what you could do is you could actually change the connections around from your valve block to your air spring. So for example, we know that this vehicle is typically within two or three hours lowering the front right. So you could swap the air lines around from your front right to your front left and see if it changes behavior. So the front left dip down first before the front right. Also, you could actually remove, say, the uh, air line to the compressor, put that down into some water, and see if it bubbles when the vehicle's sitting on the ground. Now, I'm not going to do that because, as I said, I'm convinced myself already that it's the valve block, but I will show you some leak testing with the soapy water. So to do the test, I've jumped into the vehicle, started the engine, as you can see, and then I've hit the button from the airmatic control to fully raise the suspension to the maximum height possible. So with the vehicle in the fully raised position, we've actually got the maximum amount of air pressure in the system. I'm just spraying some soapy water around the place. Now, if there was a leak, you would one, hear it, but then you'd visually see bubbles of that soapy water come out there. Let's just check the other side while we're here. So, spraying at the top in there as well. And we can't see anything there. So then, 
We've actually got access to the spring, so we'll get up in here as much as we can. And we'll just spray soapy water around the place. Now, you can't see any bubbles, but that's really soaked down. And you can't hear anything. So we'll jump around the other side as well, since we're here now. That bubble's just running down the side there. That's nothing. And up on the air spring as well. As you can see, there's absolutely no air bubbles coming out of that. So as you can see, we fully sprayed down both the front right and the front left strut with that soapy water. And doing that, we've been able to test both visually and also listening that we don't have any air leaks at all. We sprayed down the air spring part as well as the top of the strut where the airline goes in. Now, if you suspect that you had a problem in the rear, clearly this car doesn't have a problem in the rear at all because the rear is always completely up, if anything, more up than it was when you left it parked, then you do the same thing with the rear. Spray the air spring down and where the connector goes in. Now, also, thinking about it, I've shown you my approach here logically, thinking about the complete system. This is the process that I go through and we can only conclude that we've got a problem with the valve block. Now, I don't actually have a valve block here today, so we'll wrap this video up with the diagnosis. I will put a link to the part that I'm going to purchase and you can watch out for that video in the future on how to actually replace the valve block. But the point here was to show you the diagnosis process so that we're not just taking a parts cannon approach to replacing parts. It would have been very simple to start by replacing that front right air spring. And it's not the problem at all. So as I said, the replacement of the air block will be a future video. However, I'll just run through the steps involved so you get an appreciation of how easy that job will actually be. So to start with, you're gonna to wanna to put your vehicle up on axle stands, all four corners, because we are removing every single air line from that valve block. Then you're gonna to wanna to come in under the bonnet to the fuse box, remove the airmatic fuse. Then, because the vehicle is up on its axle stands, you'll take this front right wheel off, and then the inner fender well, it's just a plastic arch, there's only about three or four screws that hold that in. Now, once you've got that wheel and fender well arch out, you'll be able to visually see the compressor and the valve block. The valve block only has two T10 screws holding it in, and then the six air lines. And you're simply gonna undo all of those air lines put the airlines back into the new valve block. Really easy, they're all color coded so you can't go wrong. And then you put it all back together. You put the fender well back in, the wheel back on, and the fuse back in for the air max suspension, drop it down on the ground, and you're good to go. There is just one trick that I'll mention, is that sometimes the compressor doesn't kick in. So what you'll need to do, potentially, is to raise the vehicle up, as you saw today. That'll kick the compressor in, definitely. So folks, by the time I replace the air block in this vehicle, I will have actually replaced every single airmatic component on this vehicle. Each of the air springs, the front left, front right, right left, right rear, the air compressor, as well as the air block. So I'll put a playlist together because I've filmed it all along the way, and you'll be able to go to that playlist and see step-by-step -step DIY instructions. But furthermore, I'll also put all of those aftermarket links to all of the aftermarket parts so the cost to you will only be five or six hundred dollars for all of the parts now by comparison if you went to the mercedes dealership i know for a fact that the cost would be over ten thousand dollars for mercedes to do all of that work and to supply genuine mercedes parts so i suppose it's your choice whether you want to do it yourself and save the money with aftermarket parts or to go to the mercedes dealership but if you have liked this video do hit that like button, it's truly appreciated. And do drop a comment down below. Tell us if you've liked this style of diagnosis video or not, and anything else. We just love reading all of those comments. And if you're interested in DIY maintenance around the home or on the vehicles, we've got the Mercedes, the Audi, the Mazda 3 and the early Ford Falcon, then do hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have a good evening.